You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You got to make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to call in, if you'd like to participate in the show, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. New callers go directly to the front of the line. We don't have any new callers today, so why don't we get started with our old buddy Snacks? Hey! Snacks! We may need to score 70, but we're on the way. Keep at it. Fair enough. Daddy, I'm going to call you three times today. There's some TD. For the record, it is, uh, yep, it is about noon. We're still game time, so we're just getting started, and uh, Snack's a little bit excited. Let's see what Jersey Mike has to say. Jersey Mike, we on one, boys. <laughs> we on one. Keep this energy up for the rest of the game. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Go Pack Go. Twelve fourteen, man. We're just getting started. This I'm so excited for today. I've been dying to get through this. I'm sure there's going to be some notes and critiques here and there, which is fine. We should dig into it, but man, I love this. This is what I needed this so bad. Daddy! <laughs> Snacks. Four down stops? Two-minute warning before the half? What's going on right now? Love it, man. Love it. Keeping the train going, buddy. <sighs> it's like I get to live it all over again, you know? It's, it's, it's just been, I mean, tomorrow... Tomorrow is we're going to do sort of a deep dive into Jordan Love and why, like, this is pretty legit. But anyways, that's that's but it, the, the bottom line is, like, I, I've been able to do nothing but just enjoy it. Bask, if you will. Hey, Ryan, people have been laughing. How's it going, man? Good. Hope you're having yourself a good turkey day. You're going to probably want to hear this on turkey day, but I hope you did have a good one. Um, did. Woke up a couple minutes after uh, kickoff because it was a... 8.30 in the morning to start up here, so I was a little late getting to turn the game on. Shocked to see that we were up 7 nothing when I turned it on. And this whole first half, because I'm calling with five seconds left in the half, man, I did not expect to see this at all. Um, you know, want to want to go back and look at it. I mean, it looks like we're playing great, and it looks like Detroit don't know what they're doing. It's like we're looking at a game from 10 years ago. No this, is, this is crazy. Um, I don't know what's going to happen this season. Uh, my, my goal and desires of Getting us a high draft pick and, you know, moving on from there, that, that seems to be pretty dashed. I know everybody thinks that I'm crazy for doing it, but they're thinking that way sometimes. But if you remember the Niners a few years back had a really bad season when Garoppolo went down, ended up getting a high draft pick, and that's how they got, you know, Bosa and all these other great players on their defense and the other players that they have because they got those high draft picks because they had one bad, bad year. So that's what I was kind of hoping for. We got one really bad, bad year. We get a couple of high draft pick players. And, and, but besides the point, that's explaining something that don't matter right now. Well, I, I don't know. We'll see how the second half of this game goes, but my goodness, what a, what a, what a look it is. And if you look at the rest of the season, you could say there's only two games that we really got to think about losing. Heck, we could end up being nine and eight and nine and eight in the NFC looks like a playoff team. So who knows? Let's, let's see how the rest of this game goes. All right. Go, Pat, go. You know, I wouldn't looked at it. 
the last time the Packers really just dominated the Lions, and I'm not talking about as a game, I'm talking about that year. It, 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 they, they've won twice in a year, but I'm talking about just very comfortably. You could argue it was 2009, the last time that it wasn't at least a little bit close in at least one of the games. So 2009, just working backwards, 34-12. to 12. The game before that was 26-0. to 0. Then going back to 2008, we won 31-21. That's a 10-point win. Before that, it was 48-25. Before that, it was 34-13. This is getting into 2007. Before that, 37-26. That's still 11 points. Before that, it was 17-9. I guess we'll call that a pretty big win. Uh, 31-24 and then was an overtime win. So there was a stretch right in here um, from 2006 to 2009 where the Packers just dominated. You know, it's just like they're a joke. They don't exist. It doesn't matter. Since then, it's been, you know, 2010, we won by two and then lost. 2011, uh, we beat them by 12 the first time, and then only by four the next game. It was 41 to 45, so that was pretty close. 2012, we won twice, but the first game was by four. The second game was by seven, so those are both relatively close. Actually, I lied, 2013. 2013, we beat them 22-9, and then the next time was 40 to 10. But still, pretty much every year, it's been cutting it close. And then, and then, To make matters even worse, we've lost the last four in a row. So, you know, 2021, we beat them the first time, 35-17, just whooped them. But then when we saw them in January of that season, it was 2022, but it was the 2021 season, we lost 37-30, then we lost 15-9, then we lost 20-16, then we lost 34-20. So, yeah, you got to go back a ways before, I mean, the Lions have been irrelevant for a long time, but they've played us tough for an even longer period of time. You got to go back a ways to where it was the Packers are good, the Lions sucked, and they didn't have some kind of freaking juju voodoo over us. So, felt good, man. Felt good. And you're right. It did kind of feel like the old days. Hey, it's Jersey Mike. What's up, Jersey I'm feeling really good. You know what? <laughs> Second quarter was a bit of a grind, but we, we got to be real happy with everything that's gone on to this point. This is the kind of football the Green Bay Packers need to play. I mean, I, I, I'm seeing some things. I don't care about them, though, because right. honestly, if this team just keeps playing with this kind of heart, with this kind of grit, with this kind of ferocity, we're going to continue to win games. Hell, if we play like this next week when we play the Chiefs, Oh, my God. I don't want to know how good of a game it's going to be. Are we talking about Jordan Love, Redemption in Kansas City? I, or are we playing? I, I don't even know where we're playing, but can we can we get that game? I think it's possible. I really do. You know what? Who, who knows what we're going to do at the end of this game here? We could, we could end up losing it. But for right now, I'm real happy with how this defense and this offensive plays. You know, there's been some miscues, but I'm okay with miscues if we just keep showing up. Play after play. You know, I'm, I'm not liking some of the calls by Barry. I'm not liking some of the calls by LaFleur. No. But at the end of the day, that's going to happen regardless. We should be really happy with the position that this team is in. And I hope we keep this energy up for the rest of the game and the rest of the season. Go Pat Go. That was just 100%. I mean, that, that summarized three days worth of podcasts. It really didn't need to listen beyond that. That's pretty much my exact takeaway. You can find fault with every single thing. The offensive line, we'll talk about how much Jordan was pressured. It was, it was actually really a big number. Um, Jordan was not perfect. The receivers were not perfect. The play calling, and, and I agree. There were calls by Matt LaFleur. I'm looking at it going, what the F is this? Joe Barry. Same thing, right? I thought the defense did great, but I, I was going to lose my freaking mind that Rashawn Gary just didn't play. Didn't play. Um, I mean, he did, but just not nearly as much as I wanted. But you know what? Who gives a crap? I mean, I, I do moving forward, but um, it, it, it really did come down to the, the way that they played, right? And, and again, that was kind of one of the things I mentioned before. It wasn't just, you know, when we talk about we don't have enough talent. Okay, whatever. I, I think that's bull crap. But we talk about talent. We talk about you know making mistakes. We talk about play calling. We talk about coaching and all that stuff. Look at how much of that stuff we no longer give a crap about. 
when this team just plays with heart and with passion and with violence. Like I said, this was the more physical team on this day. Was it a perfect game? No. Did Jordan still make throws that I hated? Yes. Did the receivers still drop passes like Romeo Dobbs hit him basically in the hands, bounced off his thigh? Like, that's stupid. Yes. Did we see a botched handoff? Yes. Were there stupid play calls? Yes. All of that still happened. We had missed extra points. We had missed field goals. Pretty much every single thing that could have possibly gone wrong went wrong at some point or another. But not one of us gives a crap because the way that they played overcame all of that. And I agree. If they, if they, if they do that again, I, and, and I, similar to the Lions game, about, about halftime, which is where we're at. We got one or two more halftime calls here. Nico and Chris from Alabama. Similar to the Lions game, at halftime, I went into it saying, you know what, if they keep playing like this, I don't care if we lose. If we lose by a field goal or something, like it's, it's going to be a little bit of a heartbreaker. It's going to suck, no doubt. Winning is obviously better here, but um, I'm just going to feel good about the team. And the point I make on tomorrow's podcast, I think, sorry if I said it on this one and I sound like an idiot, but <laughs> the Super Bowl for the Packers this year is Jordan Love being a really good quarterback. That's the Super Bowl. If I end the season, like Watson's not it, Reed's not it, Matt LaFleur's got to go, Joe Barry's got to go, like all that suck. If Jordan Love is the guy, if he continues to play at this level, and again, I'm going to go in deep on how good he's been and where he ranks and kind of comparing to, you know, his draft class, comparing to current quarterbacks, comparing to Aaron Rodgers first year, like just looking at all these different things. If he continues to play this way, super, I'm not saying we win the Super Bowl. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that's the ultimate right now. I'll say something massively controversial, and I'm sure a lot of people would disagree. But if you gave me two options, number one, Jordan Love is not the guy. He's not very good. He is going to be mediocre up and down this year, and then is going to completely fall off a cliff and waste the next three years, and then you're going to go into purgatory trying to find a quarterback. Who knows how long? Maybe immediately after, whatever. I don't know. That's option number... uh, Sorry. That's option number one. However... You get into the playoffs, you luck your way through some games, and somehow, some way, magically, through Jordan playing kind of well and everybody else doing just good enough, you actually win the Super Bowl. That's option one. Option two, you don't even make the playoffs, or maybe you do, I don't know, it doesn't matter. You get eliminated rather quickly, but Jordan Love is the freaking guy. He is the next Aaron Rodgers. Whether he's as good, not quite as good, doesn't matter. It goes Brett Favre, it goes Aaron Rodgers, it goes Jordan Love. No doubt, not a single Packer fan says, I wish we had somebody better. Everybody just acknowledges he is the guy. Which would you choose? I'm taking Jordan Love 100%. Like, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit sad. Like, I don't know, it'd be pretty dope when Super Bowl. And I know a lot of people would, because it's like, that's all that matters. That's all I want. I don't care if, if we suck for the next 15 years. I just want a Super Bowl. I don't, man. I enjoy this. I like winning. I like having a great quarterback. I love just Bears fans and Vikings fans and Lions fans just weeping hourly. For, for, a, for a literal generation, a generation of Bears fans are going to have to grow up and watch this. There's going to be three generations of Vikings fans. There are going to be people that, people that grew up with Brett Favre, who had kids that grew up with Aaron Rodgers, who now have kids growing up with Jordan Love. Do you understand the magnitude of that? Grandfathers talking about the days of Brett Favre, sitting with their grandkids, watching Jordan Love. Take your Super Bowl trophy and cram it in your cram hole, dude. I don't want it. Jordan Love is the Super Bowl. Period. Ah, hey, Ryan. What's hey, going on? Nico. Just uh, chilling here. Thanksgiving morning. Hope everybody has a has a good good day with family mm-hmm. or with alone time. Whatever, whatever you want. Hope to get it. And uh, other than that, not much. Uh, not much going on, really. Just uh, cooking the turkey. Injected it yesterday, yesterday with some of the seasonings and about seven gallons of butter. Um, put about a pound of butter underneath the skin, so when it's done cooking, that thing will melt in your mouth. Uh, other than that, not much going on today. Um, just a typical Thursday. Other than uh, I saw some friends of mine, they're roasting a lion for Thanksgiving. <laughs> it is currently halftime, and uh, 
Yeah. I mean, I, now, I just hope it continues this way. It is halftime. I don't like doing these calls, but it's such a momentous halftime. I mean, uh, for everybody that didn't know, Jordan Love is not so bad. And, uh, hey, for the rest of the planet, uh, let me introduce you to my friend Rashawn Gary, who seems to be everywhere. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just, I'm still in shock. I was at, you know, remember I was at the Thursday night game against the Lions in Green Bay, and that was a different team, both of them. So, uh, <clears throat> all I can say is, wow. Uh, they just tried for the 60 some yard kick. That was awesome. It was close. I wish you would have got it. But, uh, definitely agree with you on that. What a, what a shot, you know. Uh, we'll just, you know, we'll see how this goes. And uh, I will say this. If the Packers end up winning this game, because, uh, you know, the second half is going to be very different. And if they can ride through and win, and if the Packers can turn this into a little running streak, and if they can sneak into the playoffs, uh, I don't know if there's a bigger candidate for Coach of the Year than LaFleur. And I know that one guy that calls him the F. We'll probably complain, but hey, you can't say it's Rodgers. You can't. Say, I mean, it's nobody because there's nobody out there that is a veteran, uh, except for you know Dylan and Jones, and they're not really. I mean, they're younger players still. So, so yeah. So let's just let's keep this train rolling. Um, let's saute this line up a nice. Let's get her smoked and cooked, and uh, serve it to for the entire nation to see. So all I can say is, go back, go. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm. I keep saying the same thing, but I, it's like I keep thinking to myself, like, what if we get into the playoffs? And it just doesn't move the needle very much for me. I, I think part of it is because I don't really expect to do much damage in the playoffs. I expect to be ousted relatively quickly. The second thing, though, is like again, you, if you tell me this team is keeps playing like it just did, like nothing changes, even the bad things stay bad, stay exactly as bad. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. And then if you also add, oh, and by the way, you get into the playoffs, it's like, I mean, that's dope, man, cool. That's like, it's like saying you win the lottery, you won like 50 million bucks. You're like, oh, and you have a scratch off, you won 100 bucks. Like, oh, dang, 100 bucks too, huh? Nice, that's cool. But 50 freaking million, <laughs> what you just said, that's great. Oh, uh, you also mentioned Turkey and whatnot, so I have to, you know, talk about it. We, we kind of had turkey on Thanksgiving, sort of. It wasn't like a traditional big old turkey. It was like pre-sliced turkey, whatever, which was perfectly good. I'm just saying it, it still just didn't have that. I haven't had like a legit turkey in decades. And so I was planning on doing it this uh, tomorrow, I guess. My wife's family is coming over and it dawned on me that uh, I'm not going to be able to thaw a turkey. I mean, I could maybe throw it in like a water bath, but I was like, I don't know. And uh, my father-in-law gave us a substantial chunk of money for the party, which is unnecessary because most of the food is ridiculously cheap. And so I was like, well, I got all the ingredients. I'm going to make mac and cheese again. And so it's like, well, we'll get some potatoes. Make Actually, she just bought like pre-made potatoes, but I think she bought potatoes too just in case if I want to be ambitious or not, whatever. So that we're going to do that and whatever. But it's like, what are we going to do with a hundred bucks? And I was like, well, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't like, you know, trying to like lead into anything or whatever, but I was like, I don't know. We, something expensive, not like a big roast though, because then that would have to thaw and that'd be kind of hard to cook with timing. So something a little smaller, meat, expensive, like what could we do? And she's like, how about steaks? And I was like, really? Steaks on Thanksgiving, you say? I mean dare we? <laughs> just, so just tell me what kind of steaks you want, stupid. So, um, and then I was indecisive on that. So she got uh, ribeyes and New York strip because those are just like the two that whatever. So I'm very excited. And I'm, I'm planning mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, stuffing, because I haven't had it and I want it and it's delicious. And freaking steaks, dude. So <laughs> if this becomes a Thanksgiving tradition... It's going to be the greatest thing ever. Although I do, I do still need to get down on the turkey. Also, the other thought I had, and I'm sorry we're talking Packers, but I can't help myself. I'm assuming grocery stores around the world are loaded up with turkeys that they're just dying to get rid of. 
I might have to buy a second freezer and just stuff it full of like 70 turkeys. First of all, they're stupid cheap. I, I was going to buy one, and then I didn't, and then they sold out online. My little meat place that I get it from. It was $11. It was stupid. It's like, oh, it's like 98 cents a pound or something. Like, what are you talking about? Why don't I make turkeys every day? $11 is like a trip to McDonald's. I could eat this turkey for like a week. <sighs> but I got to do it. I already got uh, some injection lined up. Butterball, I've learned, is the way to go. At least that's what most people say. So I'm just going to do it up. And we'll see how it goes. Anyways, I'm sorry. I apologize. You started it. I saw that you said turkey at some point in there, so I took that as license to do whatever I want. This should be, I think, our last halftime call, Chris from Alabama. However, you know what? Let's take a break. Sorry, Chris. We'll come right back, and we'll hear what Chris has to say. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. If you'd like to support the podcast, that would be unbelievably greatly appreciated. Um, Also, if you don't want to do that, you can hit me up over at uh, Packernet Podcast on Venmo. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Hey, what's going on, Ryan? Chris from Alabama. Uh, half time of the game. First off, hope everybody having a happy Thanksgiving. Hope everybody good and full and enjoying this wonderful football game that's being played on the television today for the world to see. Man, where did this team come from? <laughs> what, 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 what happened to the team we had all uh, year? Where did this team come from? Man, amazing first half. Joy Love, 15 for 20, 189, two touchdowns. Ball going down the field. The Watson, a little bit underthrown, but they got the completion. That's all that matter. You know, on, on dark to read and, and, and track it. Like, that was, that, that throw there, I, I got to give it to him, man. And he, he seemed like he picking up, he, he picking up steam. These people were kind of starting off kind of shaky, but they got two turnovers. I mean, everybody clicking on all cylinders, man. We got to take it home in the second half and go ahead and finish the deal. Don't let our foot off the gas. Just keep doing what we've been doing, man. But overall, first half, man, I already know by far the best first half we've had all season. Yep. But I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Hope we can continue, man. Go pack, go, and I'll talk to y'all after the game. I love that at least so far – we're all on the exact same page. Number one, what the heck is this? Like, where did this come from? Number two, not perfect, but I don't care. Just please keep doing it. That's it. I mean, for me, for the people that I've talked to, and for the people that have called in so far, it sounds like that is just, that's it from start to finish. Number one, where did this come from? Number two, 
just whatever you whatever this is, just keep doing it. Damn it. <laughs> that, look at him. Look, throwing it right over the top. Come on, baby. Love it. Love the mojo. We're pulling this out. I understand like 40% of what he says, but he gets me jacked up every time. Daddy! Snacks! <laughs> That's all I know, and that's all I need to know. Hey, what's going on? So, my father, how y'all sorry. doing? I just wanted to call and apologize and say, I am sorry <laughs> to Mr. Jordan Love. Yes. He must have been listening and heard me say <laughs> he would be good if he threw pinpoint accurate passes. Remember, last yeah. call I had, I said that Herbert had like four in the game. And I, I referenced this call. I couldn't remember exactly who said it. I thought it might have been you, but I didn't know, so I didn't want to say it. But I, I, I mentioned this exact thing. I don't know when, but it's like we, we talk about the checklist, right? We set a bar and we're like, we need Jordan to do this. And then he did it. It's like, all right, cool, but now I need you to do this. And then he did it. It's like, all right, cool, but do that for four quarters. And then he did it. So he checked every single box. And then Omar calls in and he's like, yeah, dude, but how about some pinpoint accurate passes one of these days? And I'm looking at it like, fair enough. Set that bar. Let's see if he can hurdle it. What happened? Dude, we got to start calling in and just calling them out and be like, hey, man, pinpoint passes for four quarters is cool, but you didn't even get a 90 PFF grade. I mean, you were close, but you didn't even get there. You're, you're telling me you're going to be a great quarterback without that? How many four touchdown games you got? Freaking loser. <laughs> I mean, he's not it, man. I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe we don't have to do that, but it's just a, I'm just spitballing here. And love didn't have any, but maybe one during the whole season. Other than have about four or five in this game. Yeah. I mean, I can't say anything negative. It's like two minutes left in the fourth quarter, and if he plays like this, I have no problem um, have him being a starting quarterback. I believe our first pick should be a tackle, um, but I you know, also want to get a wide receiver as well in my first three picks. And just as a safety precaution, if a good quarterback comes falling down, I wouldn't mind that. Have a QB competition, but like I'm talking like a third round. Just have somebody just to push him, just in case. You know, what I'm saying I don't think Bo Nick's gonna last that long, but just a good, you know, good solid backup. So we'll see what happens. But if you feel like this, I don't even think we need that. Just go ahead and get a quarterback and skip the quarterback altogether. So anyway, go back. But. I was wrong, and I apologize (laughs) if he continues this play like that. I will say that. I will stand on that. I have no problem. I was probably the leader of the – we need to replace him the way he's been playing, but he must have heard us, all us people been playing, and this is actually – he's been getting better and better and better, and it's unbelievable how good he's been playing today. So I just want to say thank you, Mr. Love. I appreciate that. Bye. Yeah, and you're a better man than me, Omar, because like I said, I'll never apologize. I I don't think you were wrong. You weren't wrong to call in and say he's playing like trash, and if he keeps playing like this, he's going to have to be replaced. Because at the end of the day, if he kept playing like that, guess what? He was going to get replaced. So, um, you know, maybe being pessimistic for you and I about I don't think he's the guy. Yeah, I mean, I still don't know that he's the guy. I don't want to, again, I don't want to go too far in the other direction. Like, oh, I was wrong. He's the guy. And then he has a bad week. And I'm like, never mind. He sucks, maybe, but I don't know. But either way, again, we all seem to agree this is what we want. Whatever this is, more of that, please. Jersey Mike, go pack, go. Go pack. That's the kind of game I was looking for. There it is. You know what? Uh, I I said this on Twitter, and I'll keep saying this. I am absolutely okay with the mistakes. If this team continues to play like they're crazy, insane animals, that was perfect. Perfect. They made Detroit go for it multiple times on fourth down and successfully came up with the ball multiple times on fourth down, I believe, to, to make sure that the Lions could not come back into this game. Right? Look, look, the Lions are a good team. But let's be honest. There's a reason they're now eight and three. Right. Right? They've only dropped three. They got eight. So this team is good. And we shut them down. We shut them down. Hell yeah. Go, Pat, go. My MVP of the game, Rashawn Gary. Three Amazing. sacks. 
two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, and one of those forced fumbles goes for a touchdown to, to what the heck his name is. I, I don't even know. Jonathan Owens. Yeah. Great, great football defense. There were some mistakes. We gave up some yards. Joe Barry, I have some thoughts and concerns. It took too long for you to put Quay Walker on to, to Hutchinson. Or, sorry, uh, Laporta. But he did it later in the game, and it worked well. That's how Quay stopped that touchdown from happening. Jordan Love, immaculate game. I am in love with all of these receivers. Christian Watson, welcome to the party. Let's keep it going. Anyway, go Pat Go. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Green Bay Miracles, let's go. And, the, and this is what's great about it is the, the ceiling is relatively high. I mean, look around the league. How many teams can do what the Packers can do? How many teams have a Rashawn Gary that can do that? Not many. I mean, there's 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 several. I'll say several, but not that many. How many of those teams have a Christian Watson that can do what Christian Watson can do? How many guys have a quarterback can, that can do what Jordan Love did? And also have a Jaden Reed who's been freaking out of this world the last several weeks in a row. How many of those guys have a Malik Heath? <laughs> I'm half joking, but I mean, you know, for real, he was he was solid. That was just an amazing game. I don't expect that to stay that way all year, right? I mean, you look at the amount of mistake, and you just figure, hey, you get a couple more penalties, you get Rashawn not playing at 100, you know? Like, he's he's usually right at, at like an 80. You know, he's ramped up. He's real good. He's solid. He's not probably going to generate three sacks and multiple turnover and, and a defensive touchdown. And Jordan's not going to be that good with like an 80 PFF grade under pressure which is basically what happened. Some of this stuff is probably not going to happen. But to your point, this this isn't about anything other than guys just saying, I'm going to put my foot on the gas and go at 100%. If that's Malik Heath with a 95 run blocking grade, then that's what I want. If Malik Heath is nothing more than like a Geronimo Allison who comes up with those couple clutch third down catches, but also just happens to be the next Alan Lazard, significantly better as a blocker like if that's what you bring i'm a violent mfer that's gonna line up against a a, a db and just beat that just freaking mug the guy if that's what you are give me that at 100 percent, and we got this you know myers and runyon didn't have the best days listen i've already said you guys are good pass blockers and subpar run blockers that's what you are if you can give me that i'm fine with it you haven't been giving me that But if you can give me that, just give me all of it. I'm not asking you to be an elite run blocker. Give me your best version of John Runyon, which is a, you know, like a 79, 80 pass block and a 55, call it a 58 if we want to be crazy run blocking great, just to put it in perspective. Give me it. I'm seeing it from Dylan. Like Dylan's stats aren't great. And I think a lot of it has to do with the offensive line. But I'm talking about a guy that catches a pass, hurdles a freaking guy, Mid-air, a linebacker, Anzalone, hits him. He's such a big freaking beast, he doesn't even move. Still lands inbounds and is able to get a few more yards. That's Dylan at 100%. You can't break through a pile of human beings between your guard and center because the space doesn't exist. Okay, sorry. Maybe you're not Bijan and can break it somewhere and do this, that, or the other. You're not Christian McCaffrey. You know what? Just be A.J. Dillon at 100%, and I think we saw it. I saw Christian Watson playing at whatever he can do at 100%. He doesn't have the greatest hands in the world, but he's got great speed. I think he's an adequate to good uh, route runner. I think he gets no respect for that. But when you see him go up and catch those, I mean, it, again, underthrown ball. You got two defenders there. And what does he do? He leaps through the freaking roof so that it really was sort of an uncontested catch. That's that's what everybody's been asking for, you know, stop and high point a ball. Now, if it had been incomplete, I still would have not necessarily blamed it on Christian Watson, but you know what? That's Watson at 100%. This isn't what I do. This isn't my realm necessarily. I would, I, I'm would. i much more comfortable if you throw it out in front of me and let me go chase it and catch it and walk this in for a touchdown. That's my wheelhouse, but you didn't do that. And so I'm going to make a play right here, and I'm going to jump so freaking high in the air that these defenders are basically at my waist. And I'm going to come down with it on top of those other catches that are Christian Watson catches. That touchdown pass, which was such a perfect, like Watson's past the guy. And then Jordan throws it past Watson and lets him run underneath it and kind of stretch out and catch it where only he can. I mean, that, that, is, that is a pinpoint, perfect, beautiful pass. That is a great play by Watson. It is a great catch by Watson. It is a 10 out of 10 across the board. 
So I'm with you. I'm I'm 100. percent I I I had said essentially what you said, like in the in in my first podcast about it. It was the same exact thoughts I had. I I, I it's not about who you are. It's you know. You're only a six and a half out of ten. Well, we need a ten. No, no, I need that six and a half to give me all six point five. I need my sevens to stop giving me threes. That's what we need, and that's what we saw. And we beat the living crap out of the Lions. Anyways, let's take our uh, second break. I don't think we took a second break. Let's take a second break. We'll come back and hear from Steve in Alaska. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice. Quick strategic thinking is crucial, and with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown, and through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. It's only a kick, a jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Hey, Ryan. Good win today, man. I was, I was really impressed with the team, Steve, up in the last weather. Um, real impressed with the way the team played as a whole. I, you know, I, I think everything they did was, was excellent across the board. Um, again, you know, it, it's a win and you got to take it. We're, we're still in the playoff hunt. We'll see what happens. You know, the, the biggest takeaway I got from this is, is the fact that, you know, we beat Detroit and if we lost to Detroit today, we would have, uh, been on a four game skid to them. And, you know, that, that basic idea just kind of makes you a little pukey in the mouth. Who wants to say that you lost four games in a row to Detroit? I don't care how good they are this year. <laughs> you can't lose to Detroit four times in a row. So that's been broken. We're back. We're back in the positive against Detroit. And yeah, man, we'll just have to see how the rest of the season goes. Um, I hope there ain't anybody out there complaining. There's no reason to complain about so far this game. Nothing. Um, yeah, and on, we got a little mini buy, get some guys healthy, get a, get a little bit of scheme going on for this next game coming up, and we'll see what happens. All right, man. Y'all take it easy. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody out there. Bye. Yeah, and that, that to me is, is even more evidence. And again, we'll, we'll see. There, there's got to be one buried in there somewhere. But it's to me more evidence that the fan base needed this. I, again, I get it. I understand the, I want the high pick. It's not worth it if we're not going to get into the play. I like I get all of that. But just it felt so good. <laughs> Didn't it feel so good Thanksgiving national audience? Everybody's so happy. Everybody's riding high. You're going to tell me we all didn't need that. We needed that. You know, it's funny the uh you look at the Packers playoff odds and um you, I, I, if you go to the New York Times, which is the old, uh, the heck was this, 538 or whatever, New York Times, I think, bought them. But anyways, they, they have like a, a thing that tracks their playoff odds. And um, I don't know what this goes back to. This must have just been a couple, goes back a couple. Change in playoffs the last five weeks. 
So it starts at 31%. So five weeks ago, we were at 31%, and it trends down from there. There's a slight uptick. I'm guessing we won a game and then lost a game. I don't, I don't know, whatever. Um, so let's just say it, it must have dropped to maybe 20%, really low. It spiked up to 51% after that win. 51% now the Packers get into the playoffs, according to the New York Times slash 538. The Bears have been at like sub 1% the entire time. So the Lions are at, you know, 99%, basically 100%. The Vikings are at 68%. The Packers are at 51%. So right now, they're essentially predicting that the NFC North will have three teams in the playoffs. You've got essentially right now, the 49ers are above 99%. They're basically a lock to get it. The Seahawks are next. They're less than 50%. The Saints are 67%. They're the only team in their division. Um, Then you have the Eagles and the Cowboys. Both of them, you got 99% above 99% for the Eagles and 98% for the Cowboys. That's, that's, That's crazy to me because I still feel like we have the worst division in football, but the NFC is so trash that right now the NFC North is looking like the team that is going to send three teams to the playoffs. It is the 8-3 and three Lions, the 6-5 and five Vikings, and the 5-6 five and, five and six Packers. Now, it's close. Again, Packers are 51%, um, and you've got the Seahawks at 46, and I mean, that's basically it as far as competition. I mean, you know, Falcons are 32. <sighs> that's really it. Bucks 23%, Rams 15%. I mean, these things can, I suppose, switch pretty fast. I mean, if the Rams win this week they go to five and six if the seahawks win they're at seven and five or wait they lost never mind the rams win they're five and six same as the packers and whatever we'll see how it goes but um yeah absolute wild turn of event i mean and again it reminds me of last year last year all hope was lost it was done we're we're out of it get the picks get rid of rogers put in love like i'm over it then we go on a run and it's like dude we could get into the playoffs and we keep running it's like dude we're gonna get there we got all the way to the last game and then lost. But, I mean, it was it was there. Hey, Ryan. Trucker Bob here. Hey. Real happy we beat the uh, Lions in Detroit. Yes. That was a great win. I loved watching the game while we're eating turkey here in North Carolina at my daughter's house. Nice. I've got two comments. Number one, is it time for us to take our foot off the neck of Joe Barry's defense. I mean, you look at these games, they've given up 22, 20, 23, 3, 24, 19, 17. They've only had one game, uh, two games, they've given up more than 25 points. And the other two, they gave up 17 and 20. I mean, at what point do we say, it's actually working, even though it looks awfully ugly? Yeah. We just got done shutting down two high-scoring offenses in Detroit and the Chargers. I mean, we've been really hard on them. Are we really being fair? That's my first point. My second point. Well, all right. So I've, I've, I've mentioned before that the defense hasn't been given credit because the teams that they faced have been bad, right? Bad defenses, and in comparison to what other teams have done, whatever. And that's how you get like a bad DVOA, this out or the other. Then you had the Chargers, and the Chargers were a good offense, and they did it again. Um, and that one was a little iffy because they the, the Chargers shot themselves in the foot so much. But I even said, um, at the end of the day, you get credit for it, right? I mean, it just it is what it is. Considering you've come into this game already, basically dominating everybody. <laughs> As you said, it might be ugly, and and I, I think Ben don't break is hard to watch. It really is. It's it's hard to watch teams drive down the field. It's hard to watch a ton of rushing yards and a ton of passing yards, and they're winning time of possession. It's not enjoyable whatsoever. But the scoreboard is how you win. Now, there's more factors to that. I mean, if if they're dominating time of possession, then our team can't get the ball very much, which makes it harder for us to score points, which means lower scoring game, which inflates how good you are and also makes our offense look worse. But whatever, right? The the, the point is there are other variables, there are other factors, but at some point, at the very least, it's hard to continue to criticize. We can criticize things individually and independently, and I have and I will, but um, 
I, I, I guess I agree, especially after this week, right? Because now it's, and I even said that this, this is the week there are no excuses, uh, offense and defense, because the offense is kind of similar. The offense has not faced a lot of good defense. It's not a lot of good football teams. So you go up against a bad defense, usually. Um, and if you get 25 points, it's like, wow, cool. You got 25 points against the freaking Raiders. Wow, you're so good. There really isn't much better of a test than Detroit and Detroit. There, there just isn't. I mean, you got the 49ers, you've got Dallas, you've got Miami. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple, the, the Chiefs, which we will see soon. There's a handful of teams that are actual tests, right? It's sort of like, okay, if you do well here, or or if you don't do well here, that gives us that kind of gives us a more accurate picture of what you are for the offense and the defense. The offense performed, the defense performed. So, I think for most of us, and and I, again, most of the calls have been very positive, including toward the defense, are looking at it and saying, I have my reservations about a lot of things. I have reservations about Jordan. But I have to give him credit. I have reservations about the defense and the way that that things happen. But I have to give him credit, especially with the injuries. We don't have hardly any starting corners or safeties. We have Keyshawn Nixon. That's it. That's it. And we've had linebackers fluctuating in and out constantly. Both of them have been injured nonstop. Rashawn Gary is hanging on by a thread, seemingly. So um, all that considered... And although I do think that there are more variables, we are officially at the point where they they do deserve some credit. We can be skeptical and say, I don't think they're going to be able to keep doing this, or I don't like how we do this or that or whatever. That's fine. But I, I don't know what else there is really to say. If you can do what you did against the Lions... I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, the defense, you need the offense and defense to play a critical role if you're going to beat one of the top teams. They have to be involved, and they were. You know, the fourth down stops were so unbelievably critical. The third down stops, the turnovers. I mean, some of the biggest, most crucial pieces to our victory came on the back of that defense. And just the fact that you know, Ballantyne wasn't completely carved up. I mean, he did have a pretty rough day, as as I learned, and we'll talk about a little bit tomorrow. But Valentine and uh, Owens, and I mean, there, there's so many guys you can look at and say, they're just going to pick that guy apart. Amon Ross St. Brown is going to have 300 yards and seven touchdowns in this freaking game. Like, it's going to be, Sam Laporta is going to destroy us. He had a pretty good game, you know, but... That they're not able to do it. And I also talked about like Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, and uh, I don't know, like Kingsley or whatever. They had like nine or ten snaps in coverage in this game. Didn't really have any negative impact. We did, They didn't get destroyed. There's a lot of negative. And for some reason, offenses have struggled to find ways to take advantage of a team that is decimated with injuries. And I think that has to be a credit to Joe Barry. It just does. That that may be a negative because he's going to end up keeping his job. Maybe it's a positive, but like him or hate him, he deserves credit for being able to do what he's doing with what he has, period. Point is, I'm getting tired of games being risked because we, we refuse to take the points that are there. We could have kicked the field goal, but we didn't. We went for it and failed. That's three points. Now, we did miss an extra point. That's a point. And then we went for, for two instead of taking the extra point. So, in reality, we gave up five points, and this game's totally out of reach. Last year, we did that several times. We actually lost games because we didn't take the field goal when it was there. And I just think this always taking the risk every single time, I think is dangerous. You know, it's going to cost us at some point. Anyway, those are my two points. The offense, I mean, the defense is actually doing well. I know it's not great. I know it's not pretty, but they're doing well. They're doing more than enough that we can win. And point two, are we giving up too many points 
Those are my questions. I'm so glad we won. Yay. Go, Pat, go. I would uh, have myself muted for a second there. I would... I would say that first of all, I'm I'm similar to you. I, I've meant I've referred to myself as a coward numerous times. I always want to take the points. I, I don't like going for it. Take the three, three points. Uh, I don't like going for two unless I mean unless you have to. I understand that sometimes you have to do it this out or the other. Um, I will say though, a lot of times you and I are wrong, and the fact of the matter is the data would not back up our position. The NFL is moving in that direction going forward on fourth down, going for two-point conversions, all this kind of stuff. And, and I don't know in those specific instances, but that's not really the question. You know, somebody can call and say, actually, in that situation, it doesn't matter the situation. The point is, Trucker Bob and I generally um, don't like taking the unnecessary risk. We feel as though it generally doesn't work, and when it doesn't, it's super freaking annoying, and it can set you back, and, and it, whatever. But th- there's another side to that, too. There's a side. First of all, the the extra point that we missed actually doesn't work in our favor. It works against us because the idea is going for two is an unnecessary risk when you can just take the one point. The problem is the one point's not a guarantee either. So it's not a hundred percent compared to you know twenty five percent. It might be fifty percent compared to eighty or something or ninety. Hopefully, it's at least ninety. But then you run the math on two points compared to one point and, and what that is in the long run. I mean, basically, everybody goes for it on fourth down if you're in that weird range between like 40 and 50 on the other team's uh, side of the ball. So um, I'm, I, I, I am with you, but that is the way the NFL is moving. And I guess I do appreciate that Matt LaFleur is on that side of things. There's obviously a time to do it and time not to do it. Sometimes it's not going to work and that's going to be really frustrating. But there's other times. You know, there's going to be those times we go for it on fourth, and I'm like, I don't like it. Just kick the field goal, and then they convert it, and it's like, all right, well, freaking, I was wrong, I guess. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say other than that's the way the NFL is moving. So we're going to have to get used to it. And I have a little bit. You know, I used to be go for it on fourth at the 45, and I'm like, don't. Like, why are you freaking doing this? And now it's just like, oh yeah, dude, you got to go. You got to go. <laughs> so I guess those are my thoughts. That's just the way it's going. The data does back it up. Not every time it's situational, but generally speaking, going forward on fourth instead of kicking the field goal, you know, the long field goal, and even two points. I, I feel like that's cooled off a little bit. There was a point where we were starting to wonder, like, is this going to be, are there going to be teams that go for it on two, for go for two, like every single time? I feel like that's calmed down a little bit, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's just, it's the way she goes. Let's end with Chris from Alabama. We'll get out of here. What's going on, Ryan? Chris from Alabama. Man, that game was that was that was that was that's what I'm talking about, man. Yep. That's that was four quarters of solid football play. Four quarters of solid football play. Man, these last two weeks, well, they didn't call them two weeks. This last game and this game. Man, ball game clicking, man. It seems like they got some. They can keep this up. We might, we might even have some here. If, if Love can continue to play like this, Mike can, uh, Mike switch my tune. I'm, I ain't making no sudden moves yet, but if he can continue this this level of play, I might have to change my tune. But great win, man. I ain't really. I don't really want to talk about the playoffs right now. I know he got a lot of playoff talk. They'll be right there in the hunt, but I ain't ready to go that far right now. I need to, I need to see if this continue for, for uh, a couple more weeks at least before I can at least try to get back on that boat. But great Wednesday overall, solid performance from everybody. That's what I'm talking about. It just feel good to see a football team that looks like a winning football team. But go thank go and I'll talk to y'all later. That's about it, man. That's I mean I'm I'm there. I know I a lot of people are they they've been all in even through the dark era, man, for, for those couple weeks. <laughs> they were like, Don't worry, Jordan's a guy, like we just we'll get there, whatever. Um and then there's then there's you and me where it's like, look, I'm not there and I don't believe you. I don't trust you. I think you're trying to hurt me. You're trying to set me up. I'm not an idiot. I'm not turning my back on you. In fact, you need to back up and get away from me. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, 
you give me a couple more weeks of this, maybe I'll start to believe it. But um, man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Um, it's it's weird because it's like I'm I'm trying to not be that guy that's just over the top and everything else, but it's like it's it's there. And I saw we just saw it, dude. You can't show me that. You know what I mean? Like everybody's different. Everybody's got their own perspective. But remember what I said about Jordan Love. I think he's either going to be trash or he's going to be great. I don't think he's in the middle. And Jordan just showed something that was stupid. <laughs> I mean, some of this stuff is like, th- 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 this is what I've been talking about. This is what I mean when I say Jordan's, he's not going to be mediocre. He's either going to suck or he's going to be great. And you see Jordan throwing off his back foot, sidearm, in stride, you know, his ability to, to see things and whatever. Somebody I just saw that they're arguing on social media about that throw to Watson that was way off. Um, and it was like Myers missed his block and um, the defender came right in his face. So Jordan's throwing way off his back foot, right? And the balls, it's just not where it needs to be, bottom line. But there's also a, an element of, it's probably my wife saying, get up here, we got to go to bed. There's an element of he saw it, right? With a guy coming in his face, wow. Calm down. All right. (laughs) All I'm trying to say is a defender ran rapidly at Jordan Love's person at his at his at him toward his direction. And even though the the throw to Watson was off, there's still recognition. Right? You've got a guy coming straight at you. Watson's not open. He's sandwiched in between two guys, but he knows that. If I put the ball over there, Watson's going to beat those two guys to that spot. He's going to be open. That's a walk-in touchdown. And he launches it out there, hoping that that ball kind of grenades in that area. It's not on target. It'd be crazy if it was. But at the very least, there's the recognition. It's just, it's such a fast thing. It all happens so fast, but he still sees the defense. He sees Watson, and he says, if I put the ball there, that's a touchdown. He tries off his back foot with a dude in his face. Didn't get there. Still impressive. Anyways, I'm out of here. I got to go to bed. You guys have a good night. Bye-bye. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com. We make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com.